So if anybody's seen our review of The Neon Demon, you'll remember that I said that it was a rare movie where I walked out and I really didn't know how I felt about it. It's only gotten happened again with A Cure for Wellness. Now this movie really reminded me of The Neon Demon. I mean, the story's completely different. It doesn't feel the same, like, as in story-wise or movie-wise, but the way it feels, a, like, similar is in the way that I walked out and it completely messed my mind up and I was like, what? But the difference between this movie and The Neon Demon is that The Neon Demon actually had, you know, it had its climax. We knew what was going on. Like, there was no denying, like, what the story was and there was no sort of plot twist that we could say, oh, okay, that's confusing. No, there was nothing confusing about The Neon Demon, but with A Cure for Wellness, it was more confusing than anything, but it was so messed up that I walked out and I was thinking, Dude, I can't say that that's a good movie, but at the same time, it wasn't terrible. Like, I remember watching the movie and thinking, this isn't a terrible movie. But, you know, while I was watching it, I was sort of thinking to myself, this is fucked, man. Like, I, d I can't say that I recommend this movie to many people. But at the same time, like, I can't, if someone asks me if it's good, I won't be like, uh, no, no, it's fucking shite. Because it's not. So, first of all, I want to talk about the plot. Now, later on in this video, there will be huge spoilers for the ending of this movie. Because it's that movie that I can't talk about without spoilers. But I'm going to give a quick summary on the plot now. And then I'll get into all of that. So, yeah. Just a warning. If you want to see this movie, I mean, the title will say spoilers. So, you won't click on it anyway. But, anyway, let's go. So, the film follows... Dane DeHaan, who, uh, he's a great actor, I love him in Chronicle, I even thought he was fine in the Spider-Man movie. But anyway, it follows Dane DeHaan's character, and he's like a CEO, uh, a Wall Street broker. And, uh, at the beginning of the movie, you know, you see that one of his colleagues is sent away, or he goes away himself to this wellness centre that will cure him because he's ill. You know, it's basic stuff, it starts off basic anyway, and then uh, Dane DeHaan's sent to this wellness centre to bring him back to New York because the company's fallen to shit, it's fallen to pieces, so he goes there to bring him back. But when he gets there, he discovers, hey, this place is kind of sinister. So he tries to leave, and then he ends up getting in a car accident and wakes up in this wellness center, finding out that he is, in fact, actually ill as well. And they're like, yeah, we can cure you, but there's something more sinister going on, obviously, because this is, like, a horror mystery movie, so there's something going on. And we're trying to unravel what's going on through Dane DeHaan's character's eyes, um... And there's a creepy little girl, a creepy scientist, and it's just, hey, it's set up to be a pretty fun, enjoyable movie. And then it turns out to be a pretty depressing, horrible, gross movie that's still somewhat enjoyable in certain parts. So let's dive in to those spoilers. Now, uh, the little girl in this movie, you know, from the start, there's something up with her. You know, she says she's a special case, and, uh, you know, Dane DeHaan goes uh, out of town with her, and the scientist uh, guy immediately comes after her, played by Jason Isaacs, who was very good in this movie, because was anyone doubting he would be? Like, you know, who doesn't love to hate Lucius Malfoy? And uh, Jason Isaac gives another great performance in this movie, sometimes pretty cheesy and hammy, but it works. It works in this movie. So he was probably one of my favorite parts of this movie, and Dane DeHaan also is very good, and the little girl's very good. But anyway, so he starts to go under this water therapy uh, before taking this little girl out of town. He sees, like, visions of this little girl, uh, it was in the trailer, she's like in a bathtub covered in eels and stuff, and eels play a big part into this story. And when the movie ended, I was thinking, what was the significance on the eels? And I have a theory on the eels that I'll talk about in a little while. But yeah, as the movie goes on, he has more and more visions, sees more of these eels, like they're coming out of the toilet, and you know, it gets really weird, you know? You're thinking, where are these eels coming from? They will play in later, and they don't make it clear to you why they're there. But you sort of know, I mean, if I sort of know anyway, like, I think I know. If I've got it wrong, then I've got it wrong. But, you know, you can all you can all slate me for that down below if I do. But, yeah, so things get weirder and weirder. And then we get to the ending where I thought it had ended at a certain point, And I was thinking, okay, that has answered zero questions. I still don't know what's going on. I don't have a clue who this guy is, who the girl is. Um, and it doesn't end there. Um, and I was sort of thinking at first, like, oh, this movie's dragging, but I'm glad it didn't end where I thought it would, because it does add a lot. But I feel like they could have cut out a couple of sequences that I thought were the ending, and just have that ending that we got, because that would have been fine. But, you know, what can you do? It's it, it's fine, it, does, it explains things to you, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, so we find out that there was a baron and his wife who he burned alive and took the fetus out of her um you know he's a dick bag but yeah we find out about those and we actually find out at the end of the movie or at least i think it's 
it's implied, but I think that's what it is. I mean, I guess there's a really sort of... It's almost a rape scene that doesn't happen because Dana Hahn stops it, but we find out that he is, like, the scientist is, like, of the father of the little girl that's in the movie. And, you know, he tries to marry her and have sex with her because uh, he's got his, he's got his, you know, plan in his head. And then Dane DeHaan stops it and he's like, dude, you, you got to stop this shit. But I think we find out that the daughter was the fetus that was pulled out of the wife of uh, the Baron. Because he's got like this pretend face on and he pulls it off. And it's like all gross and burned and disgusting. And, uh, you know, so we find out that he was the Baron. And it's gross. Like he has, you know, like in Gotham when uh, Jerome has like the fake face they cut his face off and then he staples it back on it was like that but it was more disgusting and it was kind of weird and ironic because Dane DeHaan's character looks a lot like Jerome from Gotham but anyway I'm getting off track here so we find out that um he was the uh, father of the little girl he was the Baron and uh what we find out later on in the movie as things unravel more and more is that um you know there's this like the thing that they're drinking, like this potion thing, it's on the poster and everything. You've probably seen what it looks like. But what they're drinking is actually like from humans. And here's where I think the eels play in. There's a sequence where uh, Dane DeHaan's character, like, so they say that they've been dehydrated and that's why their teeth are falling out and stuff. It's a really gross scene with like a dentist drill and Dane DeHaan's character, his tooth falls out and they like sort of jam it in and like pull his other tooth out. But we find out that it's because of dehydration. But for the whole movie, they're drinking water. They're being forced to drink this water. And we find out from Jason Isaac's character that they are trying to cure their well-being with disease. That's how you cure something is with disease. It gets a bit convoluted and a bit weird. So the title of Cure for Wellness is like nobody's actually ill. They're all fine. They're being kept in like these tanks and they're being drained of like their sweat, which is kind of gross. But what's happening is that uh, the scientist and the little girl, they're drinking the sweat and it's making them young again. I think that's what was going on. Again, it's probably just me being stupid, but they're drinking the sweat and it's making them young again. So they're not growing old. And yeah, it's really gross, but that's what I think is going on. So the eels are eating the humans that are diseased and then the other humans are eating the eels with diseased humans inside. Yeah, it, it's so stupid. It's really stupid. They didn't need to put eels in this thing. But that's what I think it is. I think it's that they're eating these diseased eels and then they're becoming diseased and they're sweating into this jar and their disease is making the other characters young still and they're not growing old. And That's my theory. That's what I got from A Cure for Wellness. I don't know if that was true. I mean, the movie is very, very stupid. Like, it starts off fine and then towards the end it gets stupider and stupider and it just remains stupid till the end. Um... It's not a great movie, it's not a terrible movie, but that's the theory I got from it. it it's a bit long-winded and a bit, you know, a bit out there. I don't know if that's entirely what happened, but that's my review of A Cure for Wellness with spoilers, and I, I hope that I explained it right, because I felt like I was sort of going on and droning on a bit, and then I was sort of thinking, is that what really I'm trying to put across? I think it is. I think it is, but this movie kind of broke me. You remember that scene in It Was Always Sunny in Philadelphia with Charlie in the mailroom, and he's like, his mind's blown. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what's going on. That was me when I walked out of this movie. I was trying to piece it all together, and I feel like now that I've seen it and now that I had time to talk about it on camera, I feel like I have pieced it together. But I want some more opinions, so if you guys uh, are interested, or you've seen the movie, and uh, you know you want to give your theory, let me know, because I don't know if I'm right, I could be, I could not be, who knows. So let me know uh, what you think of The Cure for Wellness, did you enjoy it, did you not? Again, like I said, I did in parts, and then I didn't in parts, it was like a 5 out of 10 movie, I guess. But let me know what you think, and I will catch you guys very soon.